Hey guys, in this video, I'll walk you through how to create this and any kind of website for free using only free resources. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't be needing a hosting or domain to get started with this. And you'll have your own website with a live link in no time at all that you can share with just about anyone on the web with zero coding skills in just 10 minutes. So let's get started. The first step will be downloading the software LocalWP by Flowell. So this will be the tool that helps us get our website up and running on a local host, which in this case will be your personal computer. To get the software, let's search for LocalWP. And once the search result comes up, you will want to click on the first link up here. Now select download for free. And go ahead selecting the platform, which will be the operating system you're currently working with. Since I've got a Windows operating system, this will be the option I want to go for. Fill out this information and then click on get it now. And that should automatically begin downloading the software to your system. And if it doesn't, you can always click on this to prompt the download action again. All right, so once the download is complete, you can just select this to begin installation. So we've got the typical software installation for your Windows operating system. And if you've got a Mac, I'm sure you know what to do. So let's select next for all users. And if you wanted to, you can choose the installation destination folder by selecting browse. Since I'm okay with where it's at, I'll just hit install and that should begin installing the files to my PC. And once that is done installing, be sure to check this box to run the software and hit finish. And that, my friends, should bring us to the software's interface. And since I'm more of a dark mode kind of guy, I will just make one quick change to the default look. So I will click on this hamburger icon and select preferences. And under the teams option, I will change this from light to dark and then apply. To come out of the preference settings, just click on the cancel icon and we should be back to where we began. Now it's likely you'll be seeing this interface that looks like you haven't created any website yet. And the reason you see something different here is because I already have a website added to this tool, which I'm currently working on. Now, towards the end of this video, we'll take a quick look at these options just to bring you up to speed with all you need to know navigating your way around this tool. So let's move on to step two, which will be installing the website on your local host, which in this case will be your computer. So you can either select the hamburger icon to add a new site, or you could click on this big plus icon, which should take us to the setup process. Now, by default, you should have the first selected and we'll be talking about these other options later on. So make sure to have this selected and click on continue. And let's pick a name for this website. For this video, I'll be going with website or cap locks because that just looks better for me. And if we select the advanced option, you should find the local site domain here. If your shows website.site or something else, there really isn't anything to worry about. I changed mine to this, which I'll talk about towards the end of this video. We also get the option to choose the part we want the site installed on. I'm just going to leave that as is. Click continue. And for the site environment, we have the preferred option, which is recommended. But if you've got preferences to the PHP version, web service or database you would like to use, you can select the custom option. But for this video, we'll be going with the preferred option. So select preferred and click continue. Choose the username and password. Impute an email address you want associated with this site. And lastly, hit add site. And that should begin the WordPress installation on the domain we've selected. Once that is done, we should be brought back to where we began. Here you can see all the information about your site, including the web service environment, version of PHP, my SQL, and the version of WordPress installed. Now to visit the site we just created, click on the open site button. And that should bring us to our website. And if you wanted to head to your website backend, you just need to click on WP admin, where you'd have to enter in your username and password to get access to the website's backend. So here's a quick trick. If you don't want to use your login details and you want to head straight to the website backend from here, you can just toggle on the one click admin. And now if I clicked on WP admin, I get access to the website backend without having to enter in my login details. Still, I want to get access using the login details just so I have them saved to my browser. And these other tabs we can come back to once we've got this site up and running. So minimize this. And I can just clear up the dashboard by selecting the screen options and uncheck all this aside welcome. 
to view your site, you can just hover over this option and select view site. And this will be the default look we've got at the moment. So let's move on to style this up to look more like this. Which brings us to the next step, which will be installing a theme to help style this up. So head back to your website backend, hover over appearance and select themes. By default, you should have some default themes installed on this site. And for us to install our desired theme, that is considering if you have one in mind. But for this video, we'll be using Astra. So select the plus icon to add a new theme and search for Astra. It's likely to be amongst the top popular team here. So if you see that here, you can just install that. If not, you can search for it in the search field. So let's install this and then activate. We should bring us back to this page with the other themes. And just to clean things up a bit, I will delete these other themes I wouldn't be needing. And to do that, select either of these themes and I want to select the delete button. A prompt should come up confirming your request. Select OK. And I want to repeat the same for one of this and leave one as a fallback theme just in case. And that brings us to step three, which will be installing a starter site template that becomes the baseline in this case for your web design process. So if you've been following our steps so far, you should have this option that states, did you know Astra comes with dozens of ready to use starter templates and you should install the starter templates plugin to get started. But in the case you don't find this option at the top, you can just hover over plugins and select add new. But if you have this, you can just click on the get started button to begin activating the plugin. So let's search for starter templates developed by Brainstorm Force. Install. And then activate. Once that has been activated, it should bring us to this interface and we should be on the same page for both parties. So you can just select build your site now. And we want to choose our preferred page reader. For this video, we'll be going with Elementor. And that should present us with over 100 ready to use templates to pick from. So I can filter by categories, most popular and latest. Or I could just scroll down this page to take a pick. Keep in mind that those with premium badges you'd have to pay for and those without are free to use. But since I've already got one in mind, I'll just search for Bubble Shop. And I just need to select that and we should be brought to a preview of what the site looks like. On the preview page, if you've got a logo, you can add that here. But if you've got none at the moment, you can always upload that later. So let's keep and continue. And on this page, we've got the option to change colors as well as preferred fonts. And once you're satisfied with your picks, just click continue. Now, there'll be no need submitting your details, but be sure to have these options under advanced all checked and then hit submit and build site. And there we go. And you just have to give it a couple of minutes to have the site fully installed. And once that has been successfully installed, you can click on this to view your site. And now we should have a fully functioning site you can navigate through by clicking on the navigation menus and back to the home page by clicking on the site's logo. Now, what if you wanted to edit this page? Say for example, this home page. We'll be using a page builder called Elementor to help create and design layouts visually. So in essence, you visually get to see how your web pages are going to appear like before hitting the publish button. So to edit this page, I can either click on edit with Elementor or head back to the website's backend. Exit to dashboard and from here, I can select pages to view all pages on the site. And depending on what you want to make edits to, you can just click on edit with Elementor and that should begin loading the page builder. And now I can easily make changes to this page from here. So let's say we wanted to make changes to this title and maybe add hair cuts to this text. I can just click on this and in this field, I can add in my text. All right, that looks good. But what if I wanted to change the font size of this text? First, let's take a quick look at this widget settings. We've got the first tab that lets us add and make edits to our widgets. The Style tab gives us options to style the widgets. And lastly, the Advanced tab contains advanced settings as the name suggests. But since we want to style this text, I can just head back to the Style tab. And if you wanted to change the text color, you can easily do that by clicking into this box. And to change its color, right click, hold down on your mouse and drag around this box. But let's just leave this set to white. And to change its size, let's select the typography icon and let's make this 75 pixels instead 
And if I wanted to add in a line height of say 80 pixels, I can just add in the value here. And the same goes for the letter and word spacing. Now, what if I wanted to remove this little part inside to the bottom of this section? I can easily switch over to the advanced tab and for each part inside to the bottom, I can make this zero. And that's how to make edits to your widget using Elementor. And once you're done making edits to this page, you can just click on the update button to save your changes. All right, now what if we wanted to create a new page on this site? We can easily do that by heading back to the site backend and would want to add and want to select the add new button to add a new page to the site. So I'll just open this up on a new tab. And I can just title this as book appointments. Hit the publish button. And lastly, edit with Elementor. Now, depending on the starter template you might have picked, this may look different for you. And currently I have a blank page aside the header and footer. So there are a couple of ways you can get started creating a page. And the first would be the set of widgets we've got to the right, all coming together to create something. And we can easily do that with drag and drop. So say for example, we wanted to add in a text to this page. We can drag the heading widget to this section and change the text to what we want. And let's say I wanted to align this to the center, I can come down here and select center. To add more widgets to this, click on this icon to head back to the widgets panel. And the same drag and drop applies if we wanted to add an image. Select this to choose an image. Pick this image and click on insert media. The second method will be using premade template you can easily make edits to. And we can do that by selecting this file icon. And from here, you can find the range of already designed templates to pick from. So we've got the premium template that comes with the pro version of Elementor and the ones without these tags on them, you can use for free. And since we still have the starter template plugin installed, you can also select this and take a preview of this template. And to get this added to your page, you can just select the insert button. Then you can move on to style this to your taste. So that's that for creating a page. Now let's see how we can share this site to anyone on the web so they can see the website you've just created. At the moment, you're the only one that can see this because this entire site is hosted on your local drive. So to get a live link you can share with anyone, let's head back to local and we should find this live link option here. But it's actually grayed out at the moment and to enable this option, we'll have to create a user account with local WP and then sign in to this software. So let's click on this icon and select login to local. And since you don't have an account yet, just click on create an account and select continue with Google. Choose the Gmail account you'd want to use. And now I just need to log in using this Gmail account. So let's click on this button to open up local WP. Now let's select the site we want to enable the live link on. I can just click on this to enable the live link. And once that has been enabled, click on this to bring this up. And this will be your site's live link. This the username and this its password. You can disable it with this. And we also get the option to edit the username and password by selecting this. So to visit my site, I can just select this URL. And we'll have to enter in this username and password to get access to the site. Also be sure to have this at the back of your mind that the live link are only viewable when your computer is turned on and connected to the internet. So let's copy and paste the username into this field. And repeat the same for the password. And sign in. So with this URL, you get a fully functioning secure website that you can share with just about anyone on the web. Now let's take a quick look at some features I personally use just to make sure you have an idea navigating your way around this tool. First, let's click on this hamburger icon and select preferences. Switch over to new site default. And from here, I can change my domain suffix from what you see to it.com. Head back and I want to add two add-ons to this tool. The first to help compress image sizes and the second for site cloud backups. So let's select this. First, I want to install the image optimization add-on to help compress my web image sizes. And while that is installing, I can just head back to install the cloud backup add-on as well. And once that is done installing, I can just click on enable and relaunch. 
and I want to repeat the same for the image optimization add-on. So these are the two add-ons I use every time and to see these add-ons at play, you can just select your website and switch over to the tools tab and you can find them here. So I can just switch over to image optimization and scan for images. At the moment, we've got 130 images on the site and I can just select view image and select optimize images and confirm my request. And that should automatically begin optimizing your image files. And the same applies if I select the cloud backup. Click on connect to provider and I should be brought to this page. So select connect and sign in with my Gmail account. Click continue. And now we are connected to Google Drive for the site's backup. Now, what if you wanted to learn how to migrate this entire site to a proper domain? A link to that will be provided in the description. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.